friends, it's Amy. Welcome to Doki Doki Forest. I am so glad that you are here. Now today I thought I would take you behind the scenes on how I create my Patreon rewards, or at least how I created them this month. Sometimes it's a little different. So each month, if you are a member of my Patreon page, if you are a patron, and you are in the delightful dragon tier, you can download the digital journaling kit that I create each month and create your own pages or use them in your art journal um, and just have fun with them. So I create one character sheet each month, all characters that I just come up with and, and draw usually with a theme. And I also come up with one or two backgrounds. Then I put everything up online so that you can download the digital journaling kit and print it out and have fun with it. And the theme for this month was unique unicorns. I was going to do a dragon theme for the year of the dragon, but I just had dragons back in November for a different theme. So instead I went with unicorns. And I'll show you really quick what I came up with. So first of all, I have this sheet. These are all the final characters and they're on watercolor paper. And this is the background. There's actually two backgrounds. There's one like this and then there's one where I added a little more uh, filters and things with Procreate to jazz it up a little bit. So before it gets to this stage though, there's a lot of planning and sketching and that sort of thing that goes into it. So let me take you back to the beginning and you can see how this started and how it wound up like this. So of course, like anything, it all starts with an idea. Now in this case, I had a completely different plan for the monthly reward kit. I was not thinking unicorns um, in the beginning. I was thinking of hibernating animals. And I had drawn the background and I was about to get into the sketches. And suddenly I just realized that it just didn't feel like it was flowing. I felt like I was working too hard, you know, it just sometimes you just have that feeling. And a lot of times that means it's time to switch, you know, switch gears. Don't be afraid to switch things up when you feel like that. You know, you feel stuck or blocked or it's not even stuck or blocked though. It's really just feels like it's not organically flowing. Like you're trying to make something happen and it's really not working. So that's when I started drawing some dragons for Year of the Dragon, and I realized I was really enjoying doing that. I had drawn some dragons and painted them to go on the covers of a couple of my journals for January, and I realized I was enjoying that so much, I thought, oh, I could do dragons for Year of the Dragon. And then, like I said before, I was like, well, I can't do that. I literally just did a creative dragons theme in November. So I decided, well, let's pick another magical creature and what I wanted to do was draw unicorns and I thought well that would be really fun and I love drawing unicorns and let's not just draw a regular unicorn let's try to draw some different unicorns so the first thing I do is I take out I have a pretty large size sketchbook that I can draw in, I can ink in there, and it takes paint as well. So I can go ahead and watercolor right in there if I wanted to. But I decided to leave these just as sketches in here for now. And I just started sketching all different kinds of unicorns, different shapes, different sizes, different expressions, and different types, because I didn't want them all to be the same. So I wanted the horns to be different, and not even just that, I wanted, you know, there to be one that looked more kind of woodsy or dragony. And then there was another one I wanted to look like it was in the ocean. So some of these sketches make it through to the final page and some of them don't because I just can't fit them all on the final page. Yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. You know, you usually sketch a whole bunch of things and then you just pick your favorites. And then I drew a bunch of unicorns, then I turned the page and I decided I wanted to do some close up, like a facing forward sort of unicorn. And I was really trying to figure out how to do the muzzle and I decided to just keep it simple. 
And the other thing was too, is that, you know, for me, I really like a whimsical look. I don't go for realism. Um, I just like to do kind of cute and whimsical and just, you know, wonky. <laughs> I don't like to get too particular. And I had an idea for like a uh, snow unicorn. So I was going to make this big snowflake and have a unicorn on top of it. And then I thought, well, maybe the unicorn can be making snow out of its horn. And I wound up not going with that. But, you know, maybe in the future. That's what's so great about the sketchbooks. You know, there's some things you use and some things you don't. And they're wonderful to go back and revisit because you might see something. And you're like, oh, that's right. I was going to draw and paint that and I totally forgot or, you know, there's an idea right there. I could take that and turn it into like a bigger piece, you know, just take that idea and bring it to life using whatever medium you like to work with. So after I'm done sketching in my sketchbook, I then traced them onto some watercolor paper and just kind of moved things around so I could fit as many on as possible. And then I went in and I'm inking everything now. So I've got my Staedtler pen and I love this. I love to ink with it because then I can do my watercolor right on top of it as long as you give it time to dry. That is a really important step because sometimes it's hard to wait, you know, when we're drawing something, inking something, and you just want to get right to the watercolor part. You know, you want to get right into the painting because it's so much fun to play with watercolor. And, uh, you know, you have to be, you have to be patient or if you have a heat gun or hair dryer, you know, if you're using something like that, then you could dry it that way. And then you could probably get to the paint faster. I like to just give it time because I don't want a chance that I didn't dry it enough. And I got impatient. I've done that many times and then I smear the ink, but in this case, I tried to be good. And now we are all done with the inking phase. Okay, so we drew our unicorns and now I have inked them. The next step is to do some watercolor painting on them. So let's meet our unicorns that we decided on. We have this unicorn with a double horn and fox sort of tail. We have this kind of traditional unicorn and this unicorn, a close up with some stars. We have this dragonish unicorn with a tree branch for a horn. We have this squirrel corn. It's like a squirrelish, beasty sort of unicorn. And we have this oceanic sort of sea unicorn. So it's a dragon too. It's like a sea dragon, dragicorn of the ocean. <laughs> And then we have this shaggier unicorn, which is like a little mini horse with some flowers decorating the mane and the tail. So here we go. Let's dive in and let's get some paint on here.
so our characters are now all finished and we got to work on the background. So what's more fun than scraping paint? It is just so fun to put a couple of dabs of paint on the paper and then take a card and scrape away and see what happens. So I thought this would be perfect for the first layer. And then, you know, we just build on it from there. And then next I am grabbing this little set of color box stamps and they're all stacked on top of each other and I love them because they are leaf shaped. So I wanted to make a magical forest for these unicorns to hang out in. So I thought, you know, I'll grab the stamp. It has a few different color greens and I can make another layer just stamping away and making these leaves. Now, the only thing was this ink did take a really long time to dry. It was very, very shiny and I would think it was dry and then I would go to do something else and it would still have some wet spots. But finally, when it was dry enough, I grabbed my white Posca marker and I just wanted to define the edges of the leaves and then add in some of the veins in the leaf and maybe um, add a few twirly whirly marks and some stems and things like that. And these are just very loose doodly sort of leaves. This is not exactly going around where the ink is and all that. I just like it to be kind of random and as I said, very, very doodly. So just adding some stems in there and a little bit of detail on the leaves. And this would be where I would hit one of the leaves with the marker and it would still be a little bit wet. And I was like, oh, I thought this was dry. <laughs> and then another fun activity is to splatter paint. So I have my gold Kuretake Starry Night watercolor pan and I just speckled some gold in there and then dipped my finger in some of this beautiful teal and I just wanted to make kind of like little magical bubbles. And lastly, I brought this image over into Procreate because I wanted to add some lights, some like fairy lights to make the forest look extra magical. So I just played around until I found something that I liked. Okay, my friends, there you have it from beginning to end. You have seen how I created this month's Patreon rewards. I'm going to have a video where I use a printed version. I always print out a copy. I don't use these. These are my originals. So I put those aside in a book um, or portfolio actually. And then I use my printouts in my Patreon journal. So that video will be coming up and you know, it might give you some ideas. So you can look forward to that. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. If you have any questions, let me know. I really appreciate your time, appreciate you hanging out here. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you again soon.